everybody. <laughs> How are you all doing? We hope you're well. We hope you're well. What a crazy few days, hey, Mark? This is a little bit different. We are outside because we have no power at church, but we still wanted to bring you a program for this morning. Yay, excellent. <laughs> Guys, we hope you have a fantastic time joining in with our program today. And just a reminder, after you've watched along, don't forget to jump on our website and check out all the activities and the discussion questions and everything else that you can do with your families at home. But right now, we're about to jump into some adventures with Sam and Brenda. Woohoo! Have fun! I'm pretty sure. I'm it's pretty just this sure way. It's this it's way. Ah, yeah. oh, back. Ah, we're back. Back. Hey, guys. Back to the treasure. Hey, How guys. You? Have you remembered the battery this week? Is it all charged? Yeah, I'm ready. That thing is going to be open, and I'm sure the treasure must be in there. After all of this searching and all of these clues, surely we're at the this treasure. This is the week for the gold. Because, look, how many weeks have we had now? Well, this Where one was when we, we did the... That, that God, God was, was holy. Holy. And that he was sovereign. He had plans. Yeah, he's got he a plan plans. for us. Uh, and this one, I remember, he is incomprehensible and he's omniscient. Oh, yeah, omniscient. Like he knows like, absolutely everything. It just from, kind of from the blows smallest, your mind, From the it? smallest little bugs to the giantest stars in the galaxies. Yeah, that's amazing. Now, this suitcase, this is one of my favourite weeks because I got to go to Iraq. Yep, and I got to go to Spain, which oh, was awesome. I've got something stuck to my foot. <laughs> careful, Get careful. It, get it, get it. <laughs> oh, guys. What did we learn this week? We learned this week that, oh, that God is wrath and God is mercy. But let's not get distracted. This week we learned that God is unchanging. And he and was everywhere. He was omnipresent. omnipresent. These yeah. are such big words. But you guys are going to have an amazing vocabulary when we finish our treasure hunt. But I'm so excited to see what it is this week. Because surely, after all of these things that we've learned about God, surely we must be at the treasure. It's got to be the gold. Right. Is it heavy? Oh, it's pretty heavy. Oh, yeah. All right, good. Pop it down. Oh, careful. Watch the back. All right, I'm getting ready. Because if there's more snakes in there, even a scorpion, I'm going to give it a whack. Oh, I think uh, it should be. Oh, right. Guys. Right, let me get my trusty. There. Good to go. Lights on. Okay. Ready to go. Okay. Let's Come get on, this guys. open. Oh, hey! One out. Get it out of the way. All right. One out. Yes. Two. Three. And four. <laughs> Just, just check it. Just check Careful, it. Careful, what if it's fragile treasure? Oh. We'll just I hope go not. whacking it. Okay, all right, let's see. Let's see. I'm a bit cautious. Oh, you have got to be kidding me. Ah, There's no way we can get to that. Wood. Look at this thing. So, ah. <laughs> oh, hang on, hang on. There might Wait, be some treasure guys. after all. What's that? Oh. Check that Ooh. out while I get this out. Chocolate. Who at home likes chocolate? Let me read these instructions. It is time for a game show. The Price is Right. The price hot, is Right. I don't remember that right. show. Yeah. Don't we need more people though? We do. We need to source two additional contestants who are willing to play the game for a prize. Are there any contestants out here in the audience? You over at the back, yes, with the with the Yay! Oh, and you with and the you, fabulous yes! boots. Yes, guys, Ooh. welcome, welcome, welcome to our game show. Thank you, thank you, it's good to be. My name is Matt. I'm very excited to be here today. I'm so excited. All right, and you are. My name's Megan. Oh. I'm so excited that you have joined us for the show. Now, can I today? play too? Can I play? Yes, you can play. <laughs> Yes, you can play. I'm going to win this team. Today, we've got a very special purple-looking prize. You need to guess the price of the item, but your aim is not to go above the value. I hope it's things like hiking shoes and hiking poles and compasses. I'm, I've got those prices locked in. What are you hoping to see today? Uh, I'm hoping it's a camera. Oh, a camera, okay. And you, Mick? Anything else. I'm a great shopper. Oh. It's going to be a tough competition. All right, yeah. contestants, are you ready for I'm your ready. very first item? 
The first item we see up on the screen there is a packet of Barilla lasagna sheets. All right, contestants, are you ready to reveal your answers? Hang on, I need to step this way so I can see them. On the count of three, one, two, three. Show your answers. Oh, no. Ba -ba. The price for those lasagna sheets was $2.50. Oh, oh, Megan's the closest. I think she will award her a point yes! just because she's the closest. She is a good shopper. Come on, give me give me something else. Give me like a backpack. This one is more down your alley, Sam. Oh, After a tough day on the trails, your clothes come back dirty. So we see up here a two kilo box of Omo washing powder. Ooh, Just like you guys might That's get dirty one. school uniforms. We need the Omo. How much do you think it's worth? All right, contestants, how are you going? Yep, ready. I've got it locked in. I've got this. Two kilos, right? Yep, two yep. kilos. Ready. On your marks. Get set. Go. 18.50. Oh! $1.85. $1.85 and $5. The price for that one box of Omo, $22. Come on! Sam is the closest. That's a lot of shopping. All right. My clothes get very muddy when I go hiking. Our next item up for sale, a little snack whilst taking some photos, perhaps on the trail and definitely while you're shopping. A packet of plain thins chips. This is gonna be plain thins close. chips. Mm. How much? How much? All right, we're ready. Ready. All right. <laughs> ready. Set. Reveal. One dollar twenty. The price is. $1.75. Another point for Sam. Oh, come on. Oh, this is a close race, Matt. You need a, you need a, you need a hurry up here. Guys, get ready. Your hearts are about to melt. We have experienced some COVID inflation on this particular item. Boys and girls, how much for this beautiful oh, look at that. golden puppy? So cute. That's a little cocker spaniel. Gorgeous. Yes. How much? This is current for pricing. The puppy? Right? Current pricing. Real, real. Real, real cocker, cocker spaniel. spaniel. It looks look like a toy puppy. because it's gorgeous. Pure. Yeah, yeah, pure. From a breed, pure bread though. with papers? Yes, pure bread look with at papers. It. Look at it. You can see how that be anything but. I love these dogs. I know what I know what they would be worth. All right, are we ready for the great reveal? Ready, set, go. Twenty-five thousand. Twenty-five thousand. <laughs> Eight and a half thousand dollars. Five thousand dollars. So cute. Surely. We have got someone that has just earned themselves a double point because Me. they have got the amount exactly correct. This is tense. This is tense. The winner of this point is me. How do you feel? All right, but it's this so is cute. exciting. Ah, so exciting. All right. Well, then with that double point, she's yeah. taken the lead. No, Megan's on three. <laughs> Sam is on two. All right. What am I on, Brenda? Zero in points for you, Matt. Time Check. for a catch up. All right. Our next item for hungry explorers in the morning. Milo cereal. Right up there, give me your best answer right now. How much? Big pack Milo cereal. All right, ready, set, reveal. $15, $4.50, $5. The closest in this instance, Megan. Oh. The real price, $5.30. Woohoo! All right, quickly. Oh very exciting. Yes, you're winning. All right, guys. We've got three left. The next item, a box of Lego. 
A very lovely Lego set. I knew Not this always guy called cheap. Brick Dad that used to use a lot of uh, Lego. Ah, wow, Brick Dad. Yeah, he's a he's a good guy. I like him. All right, ready? All right, yep. Set, go. Oh, the closest is Matt. Yeah. $55. He's on the board. Yes. He might have gone over, but we make an exception okay. for the underdog. I think <laughs> good, good, probably. All right, the next one. The next Sorry, tricky we'll one is a Beyblade Stadium. Ooh. Beyblade Stadium. I know some boys that love their Beyblades. Mm-hmm. Right. <laughs> All right, the price is reveal. Oh, oh, we've got a draw. The price for the Beyblade Stadium, $59. Oh. Yeah. I think I put these numbers back eight. to front. This is point 15, eight. should have been 51. Ah, uh, <laughs> good try, good try. Point each, point each. So we've got two and we've got five. Now this next one is worth 10 points. Oh, no. 10 points for the next one. All right. The next one is God. God oh, How much crazy. is God? What is God worth? Hmm. What's God worth? This is tricky, isn't it? I'm going to have to check the answers for this one. Hmm. All right. Are we ready? Three. Two. Half. Ready? One. Reveal. <laughs> infinity. Oh, infinity. infinity. And you've got zero. <laughs> Because God's already paid the cost. We don't pay for God. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Well, let's see. I mean, let's check what the answer says. Yeah. E. E. God is God's worth, worth e. e. What's worth E? Worthy. Worthy. Worth e. e. Worthy. Worth E. Ah. Oh. Worthy. I get it, guys. God is. Worthy. Well, it seems that none of you got the 10 points, which means that we have a winner. Megan is our winner today. Thank you for participating in The Price is Right. Guys, we will see you next time. Thank you for your participation. But there's got to be some more clues about this. Like God yeah, is worthy, but what's this, this passage here? First, second. Hey, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Look, look on here. I can see some letters. Oh, you're, you're right. I wonder if this Two is like letters. a puzzle. G L. No, it doesn't work. Okay, like that. O R I O U. Oh, this might be it. Yes. Another clue. This is a puzzle. Another clue. Glorious. Well, God is glorious. So I wonder if that's what it is. Look at that. Guys, can you see? God is. Ah! <laughs> glorious and worthy look up there where it says that god is worth e or god is equals e look it says like 1 samuel chapters 4 to 7 have a look at that and see see if that's our clue okay yeah so in your bibles if you could open up to first samuel the book of first samuel in the old mm, testament that must be chapter it. 4 it's a long passage today so you could read this through perhaps after this but let's just skim through this now and let's see if we can figure out what this worthy and glorious is about. Yeah. Okay, so um, now Israel went out to meet the Philistines in battle. That's their enemies, right? The yeah. Philistines and the Israelites do not get along. No, nope. and when the Philistines drew up in battle in verse 2, when the battle spread, Israel was defeated before the Philistines, who killed about 4,000 men on the battlefield. Wow, what a slaughtering. But it was God like. Well, that's what the elders said in verse 3. They said, why has the Lord defeated us today before the Philistines? Oh, I know. And then they said, let us take for ourselves from Shiloh the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, that it may come among us and deliver us from the power of our enemies. 
you know, these guys had been so busy serving all these other gods. They had idols and stuff all over the place. They weren't really following God. In fact, they'd even forgotten about God when they went out to this battle. The Israelites? Yeah. Yeah, it was a really sad time in their history where they'd forgotten that God really wanted to be involved in their day-to-day life and he wanted their worship and they really were just not doing that were they right and now that they're finally in a little bit of trouble they think that they can just bring the ark and the ark will save them now the ark came from the tabernacle right like it was where god was dwelling and god was living and god's presence was there it was a really really holy item yeah so in verse five it goes on it says As the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord came into the camp, all Israel shouted with a great shout, so that the whole earth resounded. And when the Philistines heard the noise of the shout, they said, what does the noise of this great shout in the camp of the Hebrews mean? Then they understood that the Ark of the Lord had come into the camp, and the Philistines were afraid, for they said, God has come into the camp. And they said, woe to us, for nothing like this has happened before. Woe to us. Who shall deliver us from the hand of these mighty gods? These are the gods who smote the Egyptians with all kinds of plagues in the wilderness. Take courage and be men, O Philistines, or you will become slaves to the Hebrew, as they have been slaves to you. Therefore, be men and fight. So these Philistines, they knew about God. They knew how worthy he was of their respect and how glorious he was in delivering them from the Egyptians all those years ago. So they were so scared that they thought God had finally come into the camp. And these Hebrews, all they've done, all these Israelites have done, is simply bring in the ark. You know, and they hadn't turned to God really. They just thought that they could bring the ark in. Yeah, I mean, we kind of sometimes do that as well, don't we? Like we maybe have a test at school that we don't bother to study for or we do an assignment really late and we quickly pray and we say, God, please help me with my test or please help me with my assignment. But we haven't done any of the work. Like we haven't participated in that. We're kind of just using God just because we hope that it might help. And I guess this is kind of what the Israelites are doing too, isn't it? Yeah, they're not, they're not never bothering to worship God. They're never bothering to remember all of this stuff we've learned about God. But they've seen, they've seen God deliver them so many times. And yet all they've done is just said, we're losing, let's bring him in. Yeah. So let, let's see what happens. But, but what I do like, let's just pause quickly again. Like, How amazing is it that the Philistines who have never worshipped God before, all they've done is heard about God, yet they know that our God is worthy and that he is so glorious and amazing that they need to tremble at the thought of him and the thought of him coming near their, their battle. Yeah. So in verse 10 of chapter 4 of 1 Samuel, it says, So the Philistines fought and Israel was defeated. And every man fled to his tent and the slaughter was very great for their fellow of Israel, 30,000 soldiers. Wow. And the Philistines took the ark of God. They took it? Yeah. Back to their camp. Well, imagine wow. this was such a magnificent item. That's really with gold sad, and whatever. isn't it? Yeah. And it hadn't helped them. They thought, wow, we've got this. You know, this God must have been so powerful after all. Let's take this back to our back to our village. But that's not where the story ends. Keep going, like we get to the good bit, right? Okay, well let's skip forward to chapter five. Here, let me tell them what happened. Let me tell them. Okay. They take this ark and they take it back to like a temple that they had for their false god, where there was like an idol or a statue. Yeah, Dagon was his name. Dagon, yeah. And you know what happened when they put the Ark of the Covenant near their fake god, Dagon. Do you know what happened the next day when they went into the room? The idol had fallen down on its face like it was worshipping the real Hebrew god. I'm sure they thought that was just a coincidence. There must have been some little earthquake or something. So they propped propped Dagon back up. They got it all ready, got got the temple all tidied up, went back to sleep that night, and then they came in the next morning. What did they find? back on the floor again but this time his like hands and things have been chopped off in fact his head was off his hands were off his legs were off all that was left lying face down was his torso just his chest was there then they knew that this must be the god that they'd heard of the god of the israelites the god that had delivered them from the egyptians not only that but when they brought the ark of the covenant into their camp all the people started growing these hideous painful tumors and they also had a mice plague go through everything and their whole 
civilization was destroyed because they had brought God in when they weren't supposed to. They weren't supposed to own this item that they'd stolen. Yeah, every time they tried to move this thing around to try and get it out of that town into the next town, then the problems would follow them. Yeah. And so many of them were, were getting these tumors and the mice were eating everything and they were getting sick. And there was deadly confusion, it says in, in um, verse 11 here, it says, deadly confusion throughout the city and the hand of God was very heavy there. And the men who did not die were smitten with tumors and the cry of the city went up to heaven. So people were dying, people had tumors. Awful. Wow. So they kept holding on and they kept seeing that God was was stronger than their idols, was stronger than things. And and, and yet the Israelites had just forgotten all about how glorious and, and yeah. good God was. Yeah. So then in chapter 6, the Philistines finally have had enough of this. They decide we've got to get rid of this thing. All it's doing is causing us so much trouble. And so after seven months of trying to move this thing around and trying to find solutions, they finally said, all right, let's let's get going. Let's get rid of it. And we're going to like, we better offer some sacrifice to God. Let's make some golden little offerings for God. You know, some little golden mice and golden tumors, things that have been affecting them. And we'll send it on our way. And, you know, they came up with a very strange plan. I think they still weren't 100% convinced that all of this stuff wasn't just coincidence. And so you know what their plan was? What was it? They got two very young cows. They'd <laughs> never... They'd never had to do anything. They were probably just playing around. They'd certainly never pulled anything. They'd never been harnessed yeah, up to anything. Yeah. And they built a brand new cart and they hooked up these two young cows to this cart, thinking for sure these cows would just like shake this thing off and kick it and break it and whatever. Mm. And they said, well, we'll put the Ark of the Covenant on there. We'll put the Ark of their God on there. And if they behave and take it away, then we know it was God. But if it's just broken, then all of this is coincidence. And we've just been really unlucky. And so we can keep this amazing treasure. Mm. Did they get to keep it? What happened? No. As soon as they put it on there, the cows went, there's Israel. And off they went, dead straight. Wow. The cows even knew and were commanded by God to return the Ark of the Covenant to his chosen people. Yeah. But even wow. when they get it back, even when the Israelites have got it back and they're all excited to have it back, they still didn't remember that this was a holy God. And God had told them that no one was to touch this. And you know what the men did in the village of the Israelites when they got it back? No. They opened it to look in it. They thought, let's open this thing up. And they'd been told. They'd yeah, been told in Exodus to that they could not look in it. In fact, only the high priest could even go near yeah, this thing. Yeah. And so you know what happened again? No. 50,070 men from that town of the Israelites were also struck down dead because they'd all been looking in it, wow. queuing up to look and touch this thing. That's amazing, isn't it? Yeah. I think it, what it shows us is that we really need to have an enormous respect for God, don't we? Like he is so holy, he is so pure, he is so powerful and that incredibleness of God demands our, demands our attention and our respect. It's not something that we should ever take for granted. Yeah, in fact, in the final chapter of, this, of today's passage, in chapter 7, they finally cry out and say to Samuel, their, their, their high priest, they say, Samuel, what's going on? Like, why, why is all this stuff happening? And so Samuel, in verse 3 of chapter 7, he says, he spoke to all the house of Israel saying, if you return to the Lord with all your heart, if you remove the foreign gods and the idols and the statues from among you and direct your hearts to, to the Lord and serve him alone, he will deliver you from the hand of the Philistines. So the sons of Israel removed the Baals and the Ashtoreth and served the Lord alone. So they removed all their fake gods and turned back to serving God. Now tell me, did they defeat the Philistines? Yeah, well, if we jump ahead to verse 13, it says, So the Philistines were subdued and they did not come any more within the border of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. And the cities which the Philistines had taken from Israel were restored to Israel mm. from all the way from the top of the country all the way to the bottom. And there was peace between Israel and the Nuts. Wow. So when we're right with God, then God is like blessing. Like God was blessing the Israelites because they were actually following him. But when they weren't following him, then there was consequences, right? Yeah. And I think just, sometimes we forget to be just like the Israelites. I think we forget the amazing things that God has done for us in our own lives and in our family's lives. Hmm. 
you know, and we, we just, you know, when we pray, we, we spend the whole time praying, just asking God for stuff. Just like the Israelites did when they brought the ark in. All they were doing was saying, all right, we need some help now. Give us help now. Yeah. You know, but not even taking any time to like really remember how worthy God was and how glorious God is. Yeah. I wonder, guys, if this week you could work with your families to write a list of things that you could praise God for, ways that you've seen him work, things about his character you know about. And as we do that, we can focus on how worthy God is, how glorious God is, and that will really help us get a really good picture of God. I think it's such a great habit we can get into when we're praying is to thank God for his character and his attributes and acknowledge those things and the things that he's doing in our lives. And perhaps we should even do those first before we even ask God for help. Yeah. God's happy to help us. but And like we saw at the end, he helped the Philistines, or he helped the Israelites, sorry, when they had turned their hearts back to God, when they remembered who he was and what he had done and, and they started worshipping him again, yeah. then we see him answer their prayers and help them. And I think as well it can affect our behaviour, right? If we are constantly disobeying our parents but we're not perhaps thinking about that, but that's actually one way we can honour God and show that he is worthy of our respect is to obey our parents or to sit quietly and respectfully during our you know, school online sessions or to be kind to our brothers and sisters. And I think our behaviour and our actions also show us that we are worshipping an amazing God. Alrighty. Well, I'm very keen to try and get to this treasure though. You know what? This box is going to be heavy, so I'm going to need you to carry it. But there are so many knots around this box that we need to take it home. And I think this week I'm going to work on these knots and I'm going to come back to you next week with an open box. Yeah, and it should have the treasure, surely. Surely. That's full of gold. Alrighty. See you next time, guys. See you guys.